What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the PT Coffee Cast, brought to you by The Movement. My name is Dalton, and alongside me today is my beautifully bearded friend, William. William, how are we doing today? I'm good. I'm, I'm focusing on growing my beard. Are you? Yeah. You're in, your, your beard is telling you that it is time to grow. Well, you know, I'll put it this way. I'm putting at least 10 to 20 minutes of effort into growing it per day. Oh, wow. Yeah. What does that look like? You know, it's not something you can really see. Mm. You sort of just have to feel it. Okay. You don't have yeah. like a 10 to 20 minute window where you specifically set aside for beard growing or? I do. You might not know what's happening though. Okay. That's fair. I could, feel like. Could be right now. Right. <laughs> I feel like a true bearded man would never reveal their secrets of growing their beard. Correct. Well, if you ever feel like you want to share something, let me know because I'm trying to work on mine. <laughs> you know, it's getting there, actually. Yeah, it's getting there, but I'm going to shave it because, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to shave it. All right. Well, that's all. That's okay. All right. Well, let's get into this episode. Um, yeah. So the one thing that I feel like has been coming up a lot um, in conversations amongst like you and I just in general with, um, you know, our team and, you know, the development of ourselves and the clinicians and everyone that's, that's here at the movement, um, is around this idea of like focusing on the process, um, versus like thinking about the outcome or focusing on the outcome. And I think, you know, it's something that people say all the time, like, you know, trust the process or like focus on the process over the outcome. And, I think it's like a cliche thing, you know, for a reason. Um, But the hard part is actually focusing on the process versus the outcome. Um, It's so easy to get caught up in the outcome of like, did my client get better? Is their, you know, is their pain gone? Um, Why did they fall off? You know, all those things instead of you know, paying attention to the process of having them move through the life cycle of working with you or through their journey. Um, And so I know that's just been a common theme that that we've talked about. And I thought it would be good for us to kind of bring it up on the podcast and maybe share it with the listeners um, to give them maybe an idea of how they can start trying to focus more on the process versus the outcome. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's so natural. We see it pretty often with, with, people not even just new grads but but maybe more in particular with new grads but is when you think about what does success mean with your clients the first thing that you go to is did they get better back to what they love Mm -hmm. and the problem with that is that that doesn't always happen and we tend to take that on really personally and I think that stems from a good place, right? Like it obviously means that you care and you want your clients to get better. Totally fair. I'm on board with that. And to be clear, we still deal with this as well. So it's a good reminder of just what actually, um, what actually does success mean when you're working with your clients? Because if it's only that outcome, then I think a lot of the times you're going to be very disappointed and take a lot of disappointment on to yourself that can really suck your energy. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's always tough, right? Cause you know, we have outcome measures or objective measures that we use as ways to see the trajectory of how the clinic's going and how clients are going, right? Like, we do, you know, track the number of people that go through the full life cycle and we do, you know, track the number of people that go on to plans with us and we have these objective measures that are indications of things going in the right direction. And I think it's good to have those things. I think we need to have objective things that we're using to, to drive ourselves forward. But it should be only what one part of the, the puzzle and getting so caught up on that can really result in what you you know, just talked about. And I think it's very much attached to like new clinicians and they put a lot of it on themselves. And I know that I did that early on and I still will fall kind of prey to that. And, um, that can result in a lot of 
feelings of like, I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy enough and that kind of stuff. And it just doesn't allow you to show up clinically the way that you, you need to. Yeah. And I think there's so many things you can't control about an outcome, you know, like for example, you can't control what happens in your client's life, you know, like I'll give an example. Um, I had a client who had started with me on a plan and was doing fine and then disappeared off the face of the earth, uh, only to return three months later, um, and just had a job switch and had, it was a big job switch, had worked in the same place for 30 years and really put a lot of thought and energy into whether it was going to take this big leap, right? Which led to physio not being the priority at that time, uh, was still doing things on his own. But from my perspective, during that three month period, <laughs> yeah, I'm like yeah. trying to get a hold of this client and can't. And I think if you're very outcome focused, that could could have felt like a big failure. Yeah. When in reality, it wasn't at all. Um, and even if he didn't come back, it had nothing to do with me and everything to do with the circumstances. And that's just one example. There's so many examples of things like that, that you can't control. And so it's not that outcome doesn't matter at all. You know, it's still worthwhile to look at, you know, how your numbers are looking and things like that. It's just not the only thing. And a lot of times you can't control it. And so I think we're trying to like, spread the message and remind ourselves too of like if you focus on the process of what you do to take your clients through and view that as a success like actually going through the process you're gonna law of averages is you're gonna start to see more consistent good outcomes you'll still have some that don't get there right but you're gonna realize that that's doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a success at least on your part or that there's some success that came out of whatever that experience was for the client. Yeah. And I think that your, that example you gave is, is one example. You know, another one is you are working with a client and they've made a tremendous amount of progress and they're, you know, starting to get back to doing, whatever it is that they want to do and they're, they're making good steps with that, but they're not pain free. And I've had a situation where I was working with someone where we've made, we make great progress functionally. They were, you know, feeling confident. They had demonstrated that they felt like empowered to do things on their own and make decisions on their own around like what activities they should do or shouldn't do or how much and how much rest they should take. And they were really showing all these factors, but from a pain standpoint, they were still in a bit of pain and they weren't, let's say, quote, quote unquote, like 100% back to where they were pre-injury. But they felt very much in control of what they were doing. And if you're solely focusing on the outcome of like being pain-free or being 100% back to where you were before, then you would view that as a, f- a failure, right? And as a clinician, you would feel, uh, and I've been there where it's like, man, I don't understand why this person is not, you know, completely 100% or pain free. And the thing is, is like, there's probably a lot of reasons for that, you know, but if you're focusing on, you know, the process or not, like not so much focusing on the outcome. um, And what we tend to focus on here is like a success, in my opinion, is like, empowering people to take control of their health and we do that by giving them the tools and through education and coaching to be able to like make those decisions on their own like as long as they're at that point then that's a success in my mind even though they're not necessarily completely pain-free or like completely 100 percent just yet in that moment and like i think a lot of the times we talk about how health is a ongoing thing it's it doesn't end you know really and so your relationship with that person and helping them really shouldn't either yeah for sure and a lot of times in this in the person i'm thinking of in this instance is like i was almost feeling a little bit like 
I don't know the right word, but like insecure about them wanting to like continue to work with me because they weren't seeing like so much improvement from like a pain standpoint, but they actually wanted to continue to work with me on like a monthly basis to be able to just stay doing what they're doing and more just like have my feedback and opinions on what they were doing um, to reach like some of their health related goals. And so it's, it's interesting, right? Cause I was feeling like insecure about it, but in reality they were actually really in a good spot um, and actually very happy with what was happening. But I was so focused on this like outcome, right? Which is very much like ingrained. Totally. And like an outcome can be stretched along a long period of time. And even if sometimes it looks instead of what happened with you, it's like, maybe it's press pause on this for three months and come back to it again. Right. And like, sometimes that's, and that's nothing, you need to there's do. nothing wrong with that. It, nothing you know? wrong with that. Yeah. And it may look like, oh, they didn't complete their like plan of care or whatever traditionally it may look like, but that's not the case in that standpoint. Right. And success, I think, can look uh, different than just like the outcome. Like, I think when we talked about it with our team, success can look like a mindset shift, you know? And so even if somebody isn't maybe pain free, but their mindset is shifting in terms of how they approach it, in terms of how they're viewing it as a long term thing and not something that needs to be fixed right away, uh, that can be a win too. Yeah, for sure. And I think just to maybe clarify a little bit, like when we talk about the process, we're referring to like our kind of client life cycle. So what that would look like would be, you know, someone who calls into our clinic and they're looking to work with us and then they come in for initial assessment. They do an initial assessment. Then we lay out a plan and have them commit to, you know, a plan of care. And then we take them through that full you know, plan of care. And within that plan of care, we have frameworks and processes that we follow as clinicians to make sure that we put our clients in the best position to have a um, success and success is dictated by them and their goals. Um, And so we have strategic things implemented throughout that process that we've worked on and evolved and continue to evolve to put the client in the best position to have their version of success. And so when we say focusing on the process, we really want to focus on nailing that down and making sure that we're delivering on that process at a high level. And if that's, if we're doing that, then we are very confident that regardless of the outcome that we're doing the right thing. So like if we're doing all of those things and someone still falls off or someone decides that, you know, they aren't, a good fit with us or vice versa. They do really well. Um, we know as long as we're following the process that that is what we want to do. Now, if we're not following our process and we have a situation where a client falls off and I didn't do my job in implementing the process that we've laid out, well then that's something that we have to, I need to review and improve on my end. Cause that's on, on me. And it's more focusing on, okay, what could I have done better with our process that we've laid out? to have better put that client in a position to potentially have the opportunity to succeed. It's not guaranteed, even if you do follow that process that they're going to, you know, have success. So I guess when we're referring to the process, that's kind of what we're talking about. And I think it's why we've spoken so much on the importance of developing that as a clinician. So if you're in a clinic, hopefully your clinic has a process that they take you through to be able to put the client in you in the best position to succeed. Um, if they don't, then we really talked about a lot on the podcast and a big thing in the mentorship is like developing what that process looks like. Because if you don't have a process, then you have nothing to guide you or nothing to fall back on um, as to where things maybe went really well or where things maybe didn't go so well. And then you just put that all on you, especially when they don't go well. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what we do see a lot is that people don't have an awareness of what their process looks like from front to back. And so in that circumstance, how do you know whether you're doing what you what you think you should be doing, right, throughout that whole process? And then the only way you have to measure your success is, like, the, the outcome. You're right. 
Um, but I do, I do think that's a huge component of it. And then process can look like things like, did you have the conversation? Right. Or did you avoid it? Right. And that is part of like, that is, yeah. And that's a big part of what can lead to giving the client the opportunity to have the most success. Like one big thing that we talk about a lot is like leaning into the uncomfortable conversation around insurance and how much insurance is going to cover and that they're going to have to pay out of pocket. Part of our process here is to lean into that conversation and we have we have developed strategies and we've practiced with our team how that they can they can lean into those things because that's part of our process and if you don't lean into that then you're choosing not to necessarily follow the process so if something doesn't go well and we're reevaluating well what happened and that comes up it's like okay well we need to address how to lean into that right or okay that makes maybe sense as to why the client decided they didn't want to continue or they didn't see the value in it. Um, and that's why it's important to have those things in place. Yeah. And like, I think if you have the conversation and it maybe doesn't lead to them continuing or going the direction that you were hoping or making the mindset shift that you wanted to try to guide them through, that's fine. That happens. Yeah. You can't control Right. And it's okay. Like if you do all of those things to the best of your ability and the client decides that they don't want to come and see you anymore. And a lot of times what happens is they just ghost you and that sucks. But if you have those things, those processes and you're reflecting and you're like, I went through every single piece of that and I crushed it and there's nothing more that I could have done in that situation. Then you just, you know, wipe your hands and, and, and move on. And there's going to be someone else that is going to be ready to commit to, to working with you. And I think that has helped me a lot to like not always put it all on me when someone else decides that maybe it's not the right thing for them. And that's totally cool. Yeah. Anything else on that? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, to highlight it cause I, I, we just had brought it up with our team and, you know, as clinicians and we're all this way is like, we really just want to help people. Right. But at the same time, like we need to make sure that we're as clinicians, like giving ourselves a fair shot and also like, you know, realizing that, you know, you, you're doing the right things. And just because someone doesn't like follow through or maybe they don't get to where you think they should get, it doesn't, mean that you're you're bad and I think you can put a lot of pressure on yourself and especially as new grads we we see that and I think as new grads we just need to be like building confidence and knowing that you have the skills and most of you do have that it's just how do we start to implement them and set up frameworks and systems so just thought it would be a good thing for us to talk about yeah I think this ends up being stuff that you should and do reflect on a lot Totally. You know, because like even for me, it's like I still have conversations where I'm like, did I go about that in a good way? Like, well, and it's not in a way where I'm like putting so much pressure on myself, but it helps me to evolve as I go. And I think that's the way that it should be. Yeah. And I think that's why it's great to establish what that process looks like for you. Um, and then again, if it's like you're in a clinic it's like establishing that with your clinical team is really good because you can be on the same page and reflecting and having conversations together. And so when we're talking about this, we can hold each other accountable as to like whether or not we're doing what needs to be done. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all we got guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you are interested in the mentorship, our applications are open, um, for our second cohort in September. So you can apply through the link in our bio on Instagram or in the show notes below. If you aren't following us on Instagram, make sure you head over there, follow us at PT coffee cast. If you aren't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you subscribe on your podcast platforms. And then if you want to see our beautiful faces, you can subscribe to the YouTube. Um, we put up the full YouTube, um, episodes there. Um, And yeah, that's all we got for today, guys. As always, stay caffeinated. Peace.